Friday. Hi everyone, I'm Katie Lee Hornberger. I'm a certified genetic counselor and I work in the space of fertility and reproductive medicine. And today we're talking about how do you know if you've had a chemical or a biochemical pregnancy? If you'd like an explanation of chemical pregnancies, check out my previous video that is called what is a chemical pregnancy? Otherwise, let's talk about how do you know if you had one? I also want to say if you're here because you think you might have experienced a pregnancy loss or you have a loved one who, who's recently experienced a pregnancy loss, I am so sorry. I've been through five myself, including one chemical loss. So I can speak from personal experience as well as my professional experience working in the fertility space. A chemical pregnancy is a very early pregnancy loss that typically occurs around four or five weeks of pregnancy. Pregnancy dating can be a little bit confusing, so you can also think of this as being about two to three weeks after ovulation and after conception of the pregnancy. A chemical pregnancy occurs when your HCG is positive. You have a positive pregnancy test either at home with a urine test or at a doctor's office with a blood or serum test. So you have a positive pregnancy test a couple of days to a week after that positive pregnancy test, you get your period and shortly after that you get a negative pregnancy test. So if you've been trying to conceive and you've been testing, you've been taking home pregnancy tests or going into the doctors and getting blood pregnancy tests and they're positive, and then shortly after that, your HCG starts dipping because the pregnancy is not viable and you get your period back and start getting negative HCG tests, or if you're doing those quantitative tests that actually give you a number at the doctor's office, the number starts going down, it's likely that you've experienced a chemical pregnancy loss. Chemical losses or biochemical losses are similar to other losses in that they can be incredibly disappointing, frustrating. They can make you mad and sad even though they are early losses. So don't let anyone tell you otherwise. It's believed that somewhere around 20% of all pregnancies result in chemical losses. So unfortunately, they're really, really common. And for some people, they may have a chemical loss and not even know it. For example, if someone's trying to conceive or they're having unprotected sex, but they're not tracking. They're not taking pregnancy tests around the time that their period is anticipated or when their period is a few days late. It's possible that they had an early pregnancy and because that pregnancy wasn't viable, it resulted in a chemical loss. The HCG dipped back down, the individual got their period and maybe wasn't even the wiser, didn't even know it because they were not testing. There's not any specific symptoms that can tell us whether or whether or not we're experiencing a chemical loss. Really the only way to know would be from taking pregnancy tests. So if you're wondering about a past time when your period was late, but you didn't take pregnancy tests, there is just no way to know. There's not any symptoms that go along with it. People sometimes say they experience a slightly heavier than normal period or that they may have a little more cramping than is typical for their cycle, but not everyone has that with their chemical losses. Some individuals who experience chemical pregnancies may report some of those early pregnancy signs and symptoms like breast tenderness or nausea, but most people who have chemical losses do not have those early pregnancy symptoms. In terms of what causes chemical losses, there is so much we don't understand yet about fertility and about pregnancy losses, and it's no different for chemical losses specifically. Generally speaking, there is nothing we can do to prevent a loss from happening once we see the HCG start dipping or once we start bleeding. And most people who have a chemical pregnancy will go on to have a ongoing pregnancy the next time around. Again, if you're here because you've recently experienced a pregnancy loss, I am so sorry. I've been there before. And I know depending on where you are in your trying to conceive journey and what you've already been through, it can hit really hard. So if you're feeling like you need support, do not forget to reach out to your support system, whether that's friends and families or whether that's your doctor, your OBGYN, your therapist uh, to ask for help. Thanks for watching today. If you're interested in more content about miscarriages and fertility, please like this video and subscribe for more. Take care.